What's up guys, it's Subzi here and I thought in this video let me make a video about the iPad keyboard and some of the shortcuts that you can find in there. Now the reason for this video is because it's been a long time since I've used an iPad. Now I first got the iPad 2 when it came out in 2011. Now that was 9 years ago and a lot has changed from there and I found it kind of weird and kind of difficult to move over to the iPad Pro and start typing on there because I thought it was really slow and clunky, uh, not the actual operating system itself but the keyboard experience. Now one big reason for that is I didn't know a lot of the shortcuts that had been implemented in there since then. Now since I had the iPad 2 I switched over quickly to the Google Nexus 7 which for me was the perfect tablet at that time because it was really small, really portable, I could fit it in the back of my jeans pocket and take it pretty much anywhere and I had this for years. But then I sort of stopped using tablets altogether, I didn't really have a need for it because my phone was big enough that I could watch stuff on the go and my laptop was portable enough and lasted long enough that I didn't need anything in the middle of those two. And that changed last year when I bought the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 as a tablet to use for making notes and then I started to use tablets more and more as a tablet and for other stuff that needed to be done on the go or just in and around the house just pretty much any use case for the tablet, even for gaming and watching videos. And now I have the iPad Pro, and so it's been nine years since I've used an iOS tablet properly, or probably eight years because I've used it for about a year, year and a half before I stopped using the iPad 2, and a lot has changed in the keyboard. And once you get used to it, it's actually really convenient, and there's so many shortcuts which you can make use of, which I'm making use of now, and it makes my typing so much quicker and so much more efficient. So let me just get into it and give you guys a rundown of everything that I know. So here we are, let's jump into the Evernote app, and let's go through some of the basic stuff first. So um, as you guys might know, if you double tap the spacebar, you are presented with a dot. So you have the full stop at the end of a sentence just by double tapping the space. And that's common with uh, many OSs. So I know that the Google keyboard on Android does it as well. And I'm pretty sure it does it on iOS. And pretty much I think every other keyboard has some sort of option for that at least. Then of course the keys that have sort of two symbols on them, you can press and hold to get the other key, so with the um, curly brackets for example, or the quotation marks, um, anything like that you just um, press and hold and you have access to that key without going to the secondary keyboard. And before on the iPad I remember there used to be some sort of split screen mode, so you used to be able to like sort of um, drag the keyboard outwards and it would sort of become two halves of a keyboard so you can hold the tablet and type sort of like that. That's not the case anymore. Now they have the iPhone mode keyboard, which you sort of pinch it, and you have like a keyboard that you can drag around wherever you want. Um, and that sort of works as a keyboard for your thumb on either side of the display, so whichever side you want it on, it's there for you. And of course, with this tiny keyboard, you have swiping, as you do on an iPhone or an Android phone, you just swipe for the word and it shows up. Now you have the ability to move the keyboard just by dragging it from the nib at the bottom or you can um, use two fingers to move it around or again move it uh, to a full screen mode again by two fingers expanding. And now we have some sort of shortcuts which I'm going to call draggable quick shortcuts. Um, it's just an easier way to do something which you can do by more than one click. Uh, for example with the capital letters if you want to just have like a capital A or something you just drag from the shift to the A and you're given a capital A on the screen instead of doing you know shift A as you normally do. And the same works for anything else on the second keyboard, just with the sort of um, icon over here for the numbers and other characters. If you just drag and hold that to anything, again that appears and the keyboard goes back to the normal one so you can just keep on typing really quickly without switching between keyboards. And the last quick shortcut is what Apple calls key flicks and that's sort of where you just flick the key um, in either direction and you get the secondary options. So for example with the question mark you can uh, click it for the um, forward slash or just flick it for a question mark. Um, it's a lot easier than just doing you know shift question mark. Now these may seem like tiny things that don't really make a difference but when you put them all together including the ones that I'm going to talk about in a second they make a ton of difference and they improve your typing speed by a dramatic amount because there's always shortcuts that you can learn and learning the ones on Android are not the same as iOS and it's just sort of useful to know the ones for each platform that you're working on. Now if you see over here you have some sort of like shortcut stuff, um, they're different per app from what it seems but on Evernote at least you have sort of um, the backspace and forward, uh, you have a paste and copy button if you've got something selected. Um, of course you have the um, suggestions for the words in the middle, um, but then you also have some sort of formatting stuff. So on uh, um, Evernote you have the bold, you have italics and you have the underline functionality. 
on notes you have a, um, a button for making grids um, it just it's different per app that you're using so if I go to select the word over here and click bold italic it just sort of applies it natively to the app and if we jump out of that into the notes app for example you can see that you have a lot more or different stuff to do so you can even access the camera you can do um, grids like I said tables so you can like have data in each one um, it just sort of depends on the app so let's jump back into Evernote and let's talk about um, what I'm going to call the keyboard trackpad sort of experience now this for me was the biggest thing that I didn't know how to do on iOS because on Android I would hold the spacebar and sort of drag it around and that would move the cursor and I remember back when I used to use iOS or for the iPad 2 um, it had um, when you would select on top of something you'd get like a bubble on top and that would sort of help you like um, refine where you're selecting that didn't exist here so I didn't know what to do with that but it turns out so if your cursor's over there and you want to move it to the left to the right um, you just use two fingers and it becomes a trackpad and it just sort of it works a lot better than I thought it would now you can also do that from the spacebar but you can't just drag it around like you would normally um, I just moved the app instead um, you can't drag it around like I said what you have to do is you just hold the spacebar and then you move it around so for me it's, it's just easy using two fingers so that way I don't have to hold and wait for a second it's not much of a hold but it's still something and another feature that I found really useful which I didn't think I would need is the ability to highlight words just by um, using the keyboard so what you do is you hold shift and drag and it sort of uh, highlights for you. I do find this sometimes uh, a bit weird in the sense that now that it's selected um, if I continue dragging I'm not entirely sure all the time which one I'm dragging the start or the end. It's especially quite difficult if you're doing it between lines um, like if you've got a paragraph for example and you want to select a sentence that goes across like multiple lines um, it's a bit finicky but it's still there if you do want it and it, for like simple lines or words it makes a difference so you can just um, sort of um, if I deselect that, if I just move to the first word and select that and then I go to bold and then it's sort of there um, it just makes it a lot quicker for you to you know, do basic um, stuff on some words and some sentences now just like I selected the word just by you know, um, using the shift and two fingers shortcut there is a quicker way to select single words at a time um, so if you just go to the word and tap two fingers down and well I didn't go to the word there, um, there you go, it just selects the word for you and it's so much quicker than you know um, dragging and getting to the last letter and making sure you don't like go one letter above or below, it's just a lot quicker to you know get to the word that you need to do, something to um, do what you need to do and deselect it and you're done. One thing that I don't know how to do is that if something is selected, so for example if I select this word, um, how do I deselect it from the keyboard? Um, if you guys do know that, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Um, but all of these shortcuts that I talked about today, um, they are stuff that I've sort of found out in the last week or two, and they've been really useful to help me, you know, in increase my productivity and just boost the workflow entirely. If you guys do know of any other shortcuts for the keyboard or any other like um, sort of quick fixes that would help when writing a document or um, typing anything up, uh, be sure to let me know in the comments below. But I know that if I didn't learn the shortcuts that I talked about today, I'd be struggling to find the keyboard comfortable and I'd find it quite annoying and I'd probably want to switch back to like an Android or have like a physical keyboard to help me with these things because, or maybe not a physical keyboard, or maybe like a keyboard and a mouse or a trackpad um, just so I could, you know, do the cursor stuff or anything else that I was doing. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to do and it cuts down the time that you need to do stuff. So I hope you guys found this useful. If you guys know of any more keyboard shortcuts or any other shortcuts through just the actual OS, uh, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more content. But as always, it's been Subsy here and I'll see you guys next time.